But our question is fluency. What does it take for me to be able to say, construct a phrase like this and use it in a Russian conversation? Well, it's only a 2 b one but let's take a look at what goes on in my head to construct this sentence. So let's start with the easiest part, the beginning. Ya pashol, ya, wait. On Iliana, I'm a, I'm a man, so ya pashol, no pashla. Okay, okay. Wait, but the verb, savachani vid or nisavachani vid? Is it one time? Is it a repeated action? I even forgot in Russian, verbs of movement are different depending on what transport you use. Am I going on foot? Am I taking a car? Am I flying? I'm probably not flying to the shop. Okay. V magazine. Ooh, the endings of nouns and adjectives. We don't do that in my native language. V magazine. Is it gdzie ili kuda? And then, patamushta, u nas nie bila. Okay. U nas, we don't say I have in Russian. We use the raditelni padiej. And then there's nie bila. It's negative. So there's a double raditelni padiej. Let's face it. If if I need to think about each of these little details when constructing this sentence, it's going to take me a good minute to construct the sentence in my mind before being able to say it. This means that the conversation of my Russian friends has already moved on and I'm going to need to stop them and go, guys, wait. Uh, yes, sorry. Do you remember two, three minutes ago you said something? I, I had something to say. So can we just rewind the conversation back to that? Not fluent at all, not fluent at all. I need to be able to do this in a much faster, much more fluent manner if I wanna speak Russian fluently, if I wanna be an active speaker in conversations with friends and colleagues over here. So, <clears throat> Accuracy, we're all clear on that. That's simple. There are mistakes or no mistakes. Now, what does it take for me to turn that into fluent Russian? What is fluency to you? How would you define fluency? You can type in the chat. In terms, Accuracy, we're on the same page. It's right or it's wrong. Now, we know that languages are alive, so sometimes there are little gray areas, whether something is right or wrong. It might be wrong grammatically, but native speakers speak that way, blah, blah, blah. That's accuracy. But what about fluency? Spontaneous, correct speech. Nice. So correct is about accuracy. I like the word spontaneous a lot. Ability to react quickly, fabulous. Oh, we're already on the same page on a lot of things. I love it. Anything else? Spontane spontaneous, reacting quickly. Ooh, well, doesn't that sound beautiful? The words fly from the tip of your tongue. They're not stuck on the tip of your tongue. They fly off it. Understandable, speaking without thinking. Speaking without thinking. That's as well what I'm showing here about my Russian. If I'm thinking about this grammar, it's not fluent. Well, I'd like to introduce you. I'm gonna introduce you today to two psychologists that have really reshaped the way I teach languages, the way I teach English. And from their theory, we're going to do a lot of activities. The first one is this wonderful man, Daniel Kahneman. He is referred to as the grandfather of behavioral psychology. And he really changed the way I thought about fluency. You already have some very good words in the chat that come from probably his book. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. He actually won a Nobel Prize for this book. 
And why particularly? Well, we all agree, firstly, on the fact that fluency is a flexible use of what you know. Even an A1 level student who knows past, present, and future simple, for example, needs to be able to use those with flexibility. They don't learn, you know, a strict dialogue in class and then repeat it without thinking, without any flexibility. I always love, you know, those dialogues in textbooks, for example. Uh, a student comes to a train station, and there's this listening activity and they learn the whole dialogue. Hello, how can I help you? Oh, I'd like a ticket to London, please. Oh, very well, that'll be six pounds 95. Oh, here's 10 pounds. Oh, here's your change and your ticket. Thank you very much. Bye bye. And then the students, they, they, they're on their trip. They're in England. They're going to the train station. They remember their dialogue. They're like, yes, I can do this. I can do this. Hello, how can I help you? I'd like a ticket to London, please. And they're all hopeful. They're ready. They know how to say the change, how to say the time, the platform, everything. They're ready. And then they hear, I'm sorry, there are no tickets, there are no trains to London today. I was not ready for that. Flexibility. Fluency is flexibility of what you know. But in addition, I love the word spontaneous and all other words that you use, they're similar, free, easy, fly from the tip of your tongue. What is very interesting in Daniel Kahneman's book is that he makes the difference between two very clear thought processes in the human mind. When we make decisions, our mind relies on a very simple system. It is our logic, our rational thinking. It is what is called system two. Picture any time you made a conscious decision, your system two was alive, weighing the pros and cons and deciding, hmm, I'll take that. This is also the system that is alive in our students when they're trying to understand some new information, some new knowledge. Whenever your students go, teacher, why? That's their system too. It's their rationale, they're trying to understand. But we'll all agree that the system too is not fast. It's not spontaneous. It needs to weigh the pros and cons. Well, Daniel Kahneman illustrates that there is a second thought process in the human mind, and it's actually much more powerful. As an exercise, all of you who have an analog clock nearby, not digital, analog clock, please quickly look at the time, tell me what time it is. Analog clock, not digital. What? What time is it? 3.20. It is 3.20. Now, let's think very quickly. I, I saw actually, uh, uh, I didn't catch your name. I saw you looking back at the clock, reading the time and telling me the time, 3.20. Perfect. Now, it happened so quickly that I doubt you needed to think about how to read the time. And yet, if you think about it, it is not logical, it is not obvious. I mean, did you look at the clock and go, okay, so the small hand is pointing a bit past the three, that means three o'clock, and the big hand is pointing at the four, but it's the big hand, so it's not four, it's four times five, which is 20. It's 20 past three. This is much too slow. Your brain looked at the clock and you had read the time so many times in your life that it was a reflex. You looked at the clock, 3.20. There's so many things that our brain does automatically without us really thinking about it rationally. Who drives a car? Okay. All of you who drive cars, danger, quickly, which foot? Uh, 
Thank you. Everybody who hesitated, I think you shouldn't be driving. <laughs> it should be a reflex. There are loads of things like that, that our brain masters, that have become skills. These are things that used to be knowledge. Somebody had to explain to us at the beginning how to read a clock. That was knowledge. But through practice, it became a skill. Driving, the same thing. Why is it the right foot that breaks? Why not the left foot? In some countries, it's the opposite. There's no logic to it. It doesn't have to be the right foot, but we established the system, everybody agreed on it, and then we practiced and it became a reflex. And you are fluent drivers. This is fascinating. This is what Daniel Kahneman exposes in his book, Thinking Fast and Slow. The difference between these two thought processes in the human brain, and both are essential. System two is logical, but it's also effortful. It is long. And it is the system that is awakened when we learn new things. Our system one is automatic unthinking. It's reflexive. And if we go back to my example of me trying to learn to speak Russian fluently, you see where I'm getting at. I want my language skills to be in my system one. This is fluency. So the question is, my students start learning new information, their system two is alive, but I need to transfer this to system one. How am I going to do this? I like to remember this as the triangle of death. Whatever way students learn new information, even if it's with translation, it doesn't matter. I know that it's their system too. You know, they see the concept, they see a window, they remember it in their L1, oh, it's Akno. And then they translate it, mm, Akno is window. That's fine, that's system two. I'm not against translating when learning new information. It doesn't have to be that way, but it can be. What I'm interested in is the right system of practice that would lead this too slow system two to a reflex in system one. And what kind of practice will even make the path in blue in system one stronger than the path in red. In this case, my students are going to start building their reflexes in English and they're going to be able to speak English fluently. So we wanna dive into practice. Just before we do, one more little bit of theory. These are the two references that I highly recommend you read. The second one is this. So Daniel Kahneman helped me define what was fluency and what was going on in the brains of my students. Dr. Anders Ericsson, an amazing man, helped me next define what kind of practice I needed to shift knowledge from system one to a skill in, uh, from, from logic in system two to a skill in system one. Anders Ericsson exposes different kind of practice. And this is how he painted it. There is naive practice that is basically simulating real life, accumulating more experience. I think you'll agree that most speaking activities we do in our language lessons are what Anders Ericsson would call naive practice. We put students in production activities, in projects, where they accumulate more experience. It is very good practice. I do a lot of those, and I love designing new production activities, projects. I do loads of those. But it is one step too far. Anders Ericsson makes the difference with deliberate practice, which is practice where you pinpoint 
something precise that you want to improve. You set specific goals. You refine through repeated performance. Repetition is going to provide students with better and better and better reflexes. And finally, you devote time for constructive feedback and evaluation. Now, this is all lovely theory, but let's dive into practice. We want to see how that fits in with our language lessons. Well, this is how I plan my typical lessons now. I know that if I'm going to have a lesson, this is not a lesson on soft skills, not a lesson on any communication skills. These are all my lessons that are based on either vocabulary, chunks, grammar, functional language. You know, they're learning elements of the language. I'm going to start with a warmer, some kind of lead into a project or maybe a task, a project. And I know that at the end, I'm gonna have some production a real life situation using the new knowledge or a second iteration of a task or project. But what I have in the middle are about 20 to 30 minutes of very, very thought through practice. In three steps, I'm going to have practice one, which is basically just checking basic logic and structure with my students. Those are the fill in the blank exercises that we have in all textbooks. All they do is just check that the student understands the new knowledge. It's basically checking system two, checking the rationale, the logic. Once the logic is checked, we're on the same page. I wanna automate. And this is what I call practice two type exercises. And finally, practice three, I wanna test and develop fluency Remember what you told me, fluency is spontaneous reactions. Well, in production type activities and projects, my students can prepare. So it's not spontaneous. I also want speaking activities where my students have zero time for preparation. They just react. You're gonna see how those work. There are little cards with a conversation starter. Student A reads it and student B reacts and they have a quick conversation two, three minutes maximum, and they test and develop their fluency. Now, we're not going to dive into more practice one type activities, because again, this is what we have in all our textbooks. It's just fill in the blank activities, make the questions, things like that, where students just confirm the knowledge. Let's dive into practice two. Now, I'm sure I'm sure in Moldova, you also have these types of students. Do you know students that are already intermediate or sometimes even upper intermediate level and still make consistent mistakes with he, she, it plus s? I see heads nodding. It's, it's a headache for all of us, for all of us. I'm pretty sure around the whole world, there are upper intermediate students that still make mistakes with he, she, it plus s. Now, let's be fair, they're real upper intermediate. They have upper intermediate uh, uh, knowledge. They, they have upper intermediate vocabulary, things like that. They deserve to be there. So what can I do with these students? Am I gonna teach them present simple again? They know present simple. If I, if I walk into an upper intermediate class with you know, a text about my routine, I wake up at this time, I go to work at that time, and then the routine of my dad, oh, look, my dad goes to work at that time, he wakes up at that time. They're gonna look at me and go like, Antoine, we know this. Yes, but you still make mistakes while speaking. What's the problem? Well, you know this, knowledge is established. I don't need more P1. What I need are P2s. So let me show you an activity that I do with my upper intermediate students to drill that he, she, it plus S and to make sure that they don't make that mistake anymore. Remember, 
they're in system two, they know it, but it hasn't become a reflex yet. So who wants to be my volunteer student? To do what? Sorry? To do what? To do what? Who said to do what? I said. So I'm a volunteer. Irina, Irina perfect. <laughs> Irina, unfortunately, you should know as a teacher that the moment you asked to do what, you became the volunteer. Yes, I agree. So to do what, Irina? Well, Irina, we're going to, we're going to pretend that you're an upper intermediate level student and you still make that mistake, he, she, had plus s regularly. I've noticed it. I've pointed it out to you and I've told you, Irina, it's no big deal, okay? I mean, people understand you even though you make that mistake. It's no big deal. But people do notice it. And I kind of want to get rid of that mistake so that people don't notice it in your speech anymore and they solely focus on what you're saying, not little mistakes here and there, because it's a shame. What you have to say is very interesting. You're a smart girl. People should only listen to what you have to say, not the little mistakes you're making here and there. So we're going to play a little activity every lesson for five minutes at the beginning of the lesson. And I guarantee you that in a few weeks, he, she, it, plus s will become a reflex. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, Irina. We're going to start very simply. This is called a do-does race, and I simply want you to say do or does after the subject that I give you, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go for it. So Irina, I do. Very good, you do. He does. We do. She does. It does. Bravo, everybody. Yay! Oh my God, that was very difficult, right? Yes, yeah, sometimes. Let's not exaggerate. It was very easy. <laughs> well, it is very important. This is the first thing that Anders Ericsson teaches us. If we want to transfer knowledge from system two to a skill to system one, it is very important that the knowledge, the system two part of the brain feels at peace. So we always do a first round with these cards slowly at the rhythm of the student. Why? So that the brain of the student feels comfortable. This is easy, okay? I can do this at my own rhythm. Okay, Arena, we're gonna do it a second time. But now I'm going to time you, all right? Mm -hmm. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this time timer is going on. Are you ready? Yes. Ready, steady, go. I do. You. You do. He, he does. We he do. She he does. He it does. 742. Does. Seven seconds, 42. Is that pretty good? Yeah. For six cards, seven seconds. Like a rocket. Like a rocket. Well, Irina, I think it's pretty good. I agree, but I think you can do a little better. Everybody help me. I need to give Irina a challenge. We know that she can do it in seven seconds, 42. What do you think is a reasonable challenge now for Irina? I think I can do it in six seconds. Irina already says six seconds. Does everybody agree? I, I, everybody's agreeing too fast. I have the impression it's not difficult enough, Irina. Maybe five seconds. Well, let's try, but result is not guaranteed. Very good. Are you ready? Five yes. seconds? Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Ready, steady, wait, 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 timer's ready. Ready, steady, go. I. Do. You. Do. He, he does. We. Do, she, she. Does. It. Does. 
614. Oh, that's better. We went from 742 to 614. Pretty good, right? So what are we doing here? The first time we did it slowly so that system two feels safe. It's very important that system two feels on solid ground. Okay, I'm safe. Then we did it a second time with a timer. Why? To have a baseline. Remember Anders Ericsson said, we need to set specific goals. So you set a baseline, seven seconds, 42. And then you set a challenge to the student. Now the word challenge is very important. If it's too easy, system one doesn't work so hard. It's not turning into reflex so effectively. Same thing, if it's too difficult, if it seems impossible. Irina, I want you to do it in one second. Not... Yeah, exactly, <laughs> it's physically impossible. So here, we as teachers need to feel out what is a reasonable challenge for our students. But if we do that, this is how we make drilling activities the most efficient possible. And gradually, you start at a safe place and gradually you make it a little bit more and more difficult. So of course here now we're doing it online and it's a presentation, so I can't shuffle the cards. But Irina, of course, if you were really my student, I would have prepared this presentation so that each card is shuffled each time you do it. So I can't predict which will be Exactly. Next. Another good way to uh, uh, add up in level of difficulty is, for example, to not let the student read. Mm -hmm. OK, I, would sh I wouldn't show you the cards. After a week of doing this, I would make you, okay, now, Irina, this week, you're going to do the same thing, but you have to react to what I say. Mm -hmm. I go, I do, she, she does. does. Exactly. And after a week of that, what I'm going to do is complicate it a bit more by telling you, Irina, you're, you've achieved your five seconds with pronouns, but you know what? In real life, we don't just use pronouns when we're speaking. So we're gonna do a do does race now, not with pronouns, but with nouns and uh, 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 things like that, noun phrases. Irina, are you ready for a second do does race? Yes. Yes. Okay, remember everybody, Irina went from seconds seven seconds 42 to 614. Now, there might be a little bit of a slump back up because the cards are new now, but let's see. Everybody believes in you, Irina, right? Everybody send some love to Irina. Come on, she can do it. Irina, ready? Ready. Ready, steady, go. Elvis. Does. Bears. Do. Doctors. Do. Kate. Does. Teachers. Do. The Queen. Does. 668, six seconds, 68. Again, I would make you repeat. And so basically what I do with each practice to activity like this, whenever I'm building reflexes, remember what Anders Ericsson told us? It has nothing to do with real life. This is literally us just making practice as efficient as we can. So yeah, you, you know what I have been thinking when doing this exercise, like it becomes some kind of drill and a kind of memorization of which verb goes with what pronoun or word noun. Uh, and like if it's about do, does, I can imagine my students doing that, but when you change the verb, it's not do, does, but it's like works or lives or plays. They can be stuck because I trained for do, does. I do perfectly well with do, does, but play, work, and go, it's a new verb. And they start repeating the same mistake. I've, I've never seen that at all. No? Uh, um, it's not about memorization because that's why you need to shuffle cards all the time and each lesson you bring new cards. I have loads and loads of cards like that. What happens is a bit like when you learn to read the 
you thought about it. Okay, the small hand is pointing at the three. The big hand is pointing at the I eight. So uh, <laughs> three, eight times five, you still went through the process. But the more and more you did it, the more it became a reflex. Eight became 40, nine became 45. Same thing with the language. What is just important to follow is this procedure that Anders Ericsson teaches us. You start in a safe space. The first times the, student the students do this, they need to feel safe. System two is at peace. The logic is, hmm, yeah, we can do this at our own rhythm. It's easy. The teacher told us a rule. It always works. Okay, we can do it. Then you time them so that you have a starting point, a baseline. And then you give your students a challenge and the students have three opportunities to achieve that challenge. Oh, I forgot to specify. I see some of you writing things down and things like that. Uh, feel free to write things down, take pictures, things like that. But anyways, just for you to know, I will share this whole presentation with you so that you can use the activities and everything, okay? <clears throat> so this is the most efficient procedure to do that, basically, to build reflexes from knowledge in system two to reflex or skill in system one. And remember what I said? You see here, there are five times the students are gonna use these cards. It's gonna take up about five, 10, 15 minutes maximum of your lesson. Don't do more because too much of this, the brain goes dead. <sighs> it's quite engaging, it's quite challenging. So the brain is working hard. After 10, 15 minutes of this, take a pause, do some pronunciation, or do a practice three, a speaking activity. Don't do drilling for 45 minutes. Your students are going to, they're going to be brain dead. It's not going to work. <clears throat> but I follow this procedure for 10, 15 minutes in practically every one of my lessons, whenever there's grammar or vocabulary involved. And it helps build these reflexes so my students stop thinking. I want my students to focus on what they want to say, not how they're supposed to say it. So let me show you some more activities. We're going to do a short answer race. Who wants to be my next volunteer student? You saw how well Irina did it. It was fabulous. I guess also we can do it with the regular verbs. Go, went, do, did. Exactly. Oh, Larissa says in the chat, practice makes perfect. I love it. I would uh, add, practice makes progress. I guess and you have chosen our next volunteer. It's Larissa. Ooh. Okay, who is Larissa? Hey. Larissa, I don't see. Larissa, perfect. All right, Larissa, sorry. I'm doing something terrible here because uh, as a teacher, I'm making sure that nobody's going to participate anymore. I asked a question, Irina answered, and I made her volunteer. Then Larissa typed in the chat, I made her volunteer. So now everybody's going to avoid writing in the chat in fear of being the next volunteer. <laughs> the pattern. Okay, but Larissa, we all believe in you. You're a wonderful student. Now, I'm going to ask you to uh, be a bit of a different student. You know, Irina was upper intermediate. She's very smart. She's a great student. Larissa, we're going to take you down a level a bit. You're, you're going to go down to A2 level, okay? Okay. Okay. I'm fine with that. Perfect, perfect. So, so Larissa is A2 level and um, she's, she's, you know, developing her skills. She's already seen past simple before. Oh, great. 
at A1 level. Unfortunately, her A1 level course was a bit of a crash course, and there were a lot of problems uh, uh, here and there. Uh, well, basically, it was a crash course. She skimmed through it, and now she's at A2 level, and she's struggling a little bit with the past simple. She knows past. It's logical. Okay, past is past, but you know, the forms of the questions and putting did all the time, mm, it's annoying, got to remember it. What do you put? Do you put V1 or V2 after did? <clears throat> Larissa, don't you worry. We're going to play short answer race. I'm going to ask you yes or no questions, and I just want you to answer. Yes, I did, or no, I didn't. Yes, she did, no, she Your answer needs to be a correct short answer. We know that in real life, people don't always answer this way, but this is not about real life. I'm just trying to build reflexes with past simple in your brain. So Larissa, are you ready? Yes, okay. Yes, Did am. you call me last night? No, I didn't. Shame on you. Did we drive the Bentley last weekend? No, we didn't. Did you eat breakfast yesterday? Yes, I did. Good. Did I even wake up yesterday? No, you didn't. <laughs> did she call you last week? Yes, she did. Did you have a good weekend? Yes, I did. Perfect. Very good. You see, Larissa did it very well, calmly, at her own rhythm. Now, we all know Larissa is not really A2. Larissa, this wasn't very difficult, right? It was. <clears throat> I don't believe a word you're saying, Larissa. According to my level. It According was. to your level, okay. Yes. Well, Larissa, if you're really A2, then let's build those reflexes because, so you see, Larissa repeated grammatically correct questions and all she had to do was answer them. Okay. We did it calmly. Larissa's system two is safe. Okay, Larissa, let's do it again. Now, It'll be in random order and I'm going to time you, okay? Okay. Are you ready? Ready. Ready, steady, go. Did I even wake up yesterday? No, I didn't. Did you call me last night? No, I didn't. Did you have a good weekend? Yes, I did. Did you eat breakfast yesterday? Yes, I did. Did we drive the Bentley last weekend? No, you, we didn't. <laughs> did she call you last week? No, she didn't. Boom, very good. 16 seconds, 28. Good for me. Everybody, everybody, come on, give Larissa some love. She did great. 16 seconds, 28. Now, we all agree that you could do it much faster. Okay, I'll try my best. What do you think? Now, remember, Irina went from seven seconds to six seconds something. Okay. It's a different challenge here. The cards are longer. There's longer speaking time. So. 16 seconds, what do you think is a reasonable challenge for Larissa? 13. 13? Does everybody agree with 13? Remember, be teachers, okay? I know, I know yeah. you love Larissa and you wanna support her and you don't wanna be mean to her, but you need to challenge her, you're teachers. <laughs> 10. 10? 10, okay. Oh. Oh my gosh, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Thank All you, right. Marina. All right, let's try for 10 seconds. Okay, Larissa, are you ready? You have to read faster. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Larissa's a tough lady. We have a goal to achieve here. I agree, I agree. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Ready, steady, go. Did I even wake up yesterday? No, you didn't. Did you call me last night? Larissa? I said. Shall we start over again? I didn't hear. Yes, I didn't hear your answer. Sorry. It was my bad, my bad, Let's my bad. Let's start over. Okay. Let's yep. start over. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Ready, steady, go. Did I even wake up yesterday? No, you didn't. Did you call me last night? No, I didn't. Did you have a good weekend? Yes, I did. Did you eat breakfast yesterday? Yes, I did. Did we drive the Bentley last weekend? No, we didn't. Did you call you last week? Yes, you did. 10.76. Bravo, bravo. Irina, do you feel the excitement? Yes, because I you were part of the we team. Did it. 
Larissa, what about you? Did you feel the excitement here now? Yes, I knew we could do it. Yes. This is super engaging. My students, I know it looks like I'm doing boring drilling, boring grammar drilling activities, but students absolutely love it. They have loads of fun with it. As long as it's a challenge. That's why I said what Alina said in the session previous to mine about challenging, about competing. A challenge is a great motivator for any human. And that's what you just need to keep alive. You need to juggle between the students being in a safe place. When they have new knowledge, they need to feel safe. Okay, it works. Boom. Once they feel safe, it works. Do 10, 15 minutes of challenging them to do it faster and faster and faster. And your students will build reflexes gradually. Now, gradually is an important word here. I hope to build Larissa's reflexes in past simple. Remember Larissa's A2. In one session, just with this one short answer race. It's going to be a matter of gradually challenging her more and more. And what I do is I regularly have short answer races where I mix things up. Larissa, no timer, don't worry, no stress. Larissa, tell me, did you watch the movie last night? Yes, I did. Does she eat sushi? No, she didn't. Oh, sorry. <laughs> did it snow last January? Yes, it did. Are you dancing? Yes, I am. Do you dance? Yes, I do. Is it snowing? No, it isn't. And then we would do it again. I would set Larissa a challenge and we would do it again faster. Are you dancing, Larissa? Yes, I am. Did you watch the movie last night? Yes, I did. Is it snowing? No, it isn't. Did it snow last January? Yes, it did. Does she eat sushi? Yes, she does. Do you dance? Yes, I do. Bravo, bravo. Thank you. Gradually, I add more and more tenses. I mix things up. It's just us as teachers, we need to feel when we need to challenge, when we need to do safe space. Challenge, safe space. Challenge, safe space. You can use these drilling activities for practically any grammar tense in English. Even for more complex things like reported speech. I like using the same cards for reported speech it works this way, basically. Instead of answering the question, student B is going to ask to repeat. Everybody is playing like, you know, oh, oh, Antoine, I can't hear you. I'm a little bit old. Oh, Antoine, can you play the piano? Oh, I'm sorry, Antoine. Did you ask me if I could play the piano? Will you call me tonight? Oh, I'm sorry, Antoine. I didn't catch that. Did you ask me if I would call you tonight? Has it been raining? Oh, Antoine, I'm so sorry. I didn't catch that. Did you ask me if it had been raining? Boom, 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 boom. You see, you can use these activities to drill anything. Just keep the five step structure. Do it a first time. No stress. Students feel safe. Do it a second time with a timer. And then students do it three more times trying to achieve a challenge you set them. Even for all tenses, instead of answering questions, you can also get students to build sentences. For example, I'm gonna play the student this time. Antoine, let's go for it. We make a snowman, we make a snowman every single day. Ron Weasley broke the queen's teacup last summer. She has been oversleeping since like forever. Bears are falling in the mud at the moment. Jack feeds my cat twice a week. My classmates and I will rock like Elvis next weekend. And again, shuffle the cards. Antoine, do it faster. Boom, 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 boom. All of these drilling activities build reflexes with the form. And they make the students, just like for me in Russian, they make it so that the student can really just focus on what they want to say instead of how. Okay. Now, to end up, I do want to show you as well, 
an activity that can be designed to build reflexes, not just with the form, but with also the logic behind a tense. Some students sometimes struggle with understanding present perfect, for example, the logic behind it. Oh, in the chat, Liana, you're asking, what platform do you use? My platform. We're, we're called Resource Education. My, my partner, Tom, and I, we, we design all these activities and we put them on our platform, on our website, Resource Education. Present perfect, I'd like to invite you to think of present perfect in this way. Present perfect explains the present. Whenever you have a feeling about the present, you can probably explain it with a present perfect sentence. For example, I'm hungry. Why? Because I haven't had breakfast. Because I've, I haven't eaten well in, in the last few days because I've been fasting. Three present perfect examples that explain this present feeling. And I have found that this is the best way to build reflexes in students with perfect tenses instead of going over all the keywords and things like that, or trying to learn chunk after chunk after chunk, I want my students to build reflexes in the basic logic of perfect tenses in English. Perfect tenses are some, something happened previously, but it's connected to now. Past perfect is the same thing, but about the past. And I give my students cards with a sentence in present, and they need to come up with three examples in present perfect that explain this. So we did I'm hungry, for example. I'm sad. Why am I sad? Because I've just watched Titanic and poor Leo died again. Give me another example. Come on. Why am I sad? I've lost my cat. I've lost my cat. And I've just understood that meta conference is ending soon. I'm super sad. Next one. I'm all wet. Why are you all wet? It's been raining. I live in St. Petersburg, so. I've been having, taking a shower. I've taken a shower. <laughs> Very good reason. I've been Rina. swimming in the pool. I've been swimming in the pool. Awesome. I'm furious. Why are you furious? have quarreled with my husband. I've quarreled with my husband. <laughs> I'm frustrated. Come on, give me examples. I've quarreled with my husband again. Yeah. I'm proud. Why are you proud? I've... I've done that exercise in six seconds. Awesome. Larissa, why are you proud? Oh, I'm proud of my daughter and because i've achieved my goal today you've achieved your goal today and your daughter has just got i don't know she has just done a great project at school she has what? finished her piano lesson i don't know something like that Violin. <laughs> you see i do the same thing with this activity i do the same procedure as before first students do it slowly just to confirm in their head that hey it works Present perfect always explains something about the present. Wow, cool. Then I shuffle the cards, I time them, and again, they do it three more times to achieve a certain challenge. And they build reflexes with present perfect. Now, it is already 3.59, but I also promised you a little speaking activity at the very end. Remember I told you that I had practice one, practice two, and practice three. Everything we've just done right now is called practice two. It's automate stage of your lesson. It takes 10, 15 minutes of a lesson where you're automating. It has nothing to do with real life. But then I said, I want practice three activities where I test my students' fluency. I want to generate spontaneous reaction in them. 
So that's exactly what we're going to do now. I have cards where I basically have a conversation starter. Students take a card, read it, and student B reacts, and they have a short conversation. Now, I'd like to start with convince. It's the easiest one you can devise because it's very real life. We try to convince each other of saying, doing, or thinking things all the time. Uh, there's just one rule that students have to follow so that it works. They have a real speaking experience. They can't agree. So basically, student A tries to convince student B, and student B tries to find reasons why not. You'll see that in two, three minutes, they quickly reach a little compromise, and you move on to the next card. For example, my two lovely volunteers of the day. Uh, Irina, let's start with you. Irina, could you please stand up? Um, no, I can't. I have a broken leg. You, you broke your leg? Mm-hmm, yeah. I was That's awful. running on a slippery road. That's awful. You were running on a slip. Why were you running on a slippery road? Just having some exercise. That's your idea of exercise? Just Yeah, no matter what's the weather, you need to exercise. That's my idea of exercise. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit confused, honestly, because at the beginning of my presentation, I was told that you have sunny weather and it's, it's beautiful, it's warm. And yeah, lovely. now it's sunny, but it used to rain a lot. Oh, so it did rain. Okay. Yeah. And your idea of a, a, a fun exercise is just to go down on a slippery road and run. Well, I didn't expect it to be very slippery. I thought I can do it. My idea is just to exercise, no matter what's outside, sunny or rain, doesn't matter. But you're, you're a bit of a daredevil. You like taking risks. I think so. Well, yeah. Irina, I, 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 just have, I just have a very fun, very engaging, very challenging risk for you to take right now. Just please stand up. You'll feel much better. You'll achieve a certain risk yeah, but my doctor didn't advise that. So I now am very cautious. Okay, okay. Always follow what the doctors say. I won't contradict that. I fully agree. Larissa, uh, your turn. Oh, Larissa, let's start a rock band together. I can't. What, what do you mean you can't? I can't. There's start a law a in Moldova against the rock bands? Sorry? No. I can't play a musical instrument. Don't worry, it's rock, don't worry. Do you think ACDC knew how to play music when they started? Have no idea. Look, you have, you have, you have like a, a nice scarlet colored hair. I think it's already very rock and roll. Um, even if you can't play a musical instrument, look, I'll give you a triangle and you'll just rock your head like that. Uh, your hair will be all over the place. It'll already be a great show. I'm sorry, I'm not into rock. You're not into rock? What kind of music do you like? Pop, classical. Pop, pop and classical. <clears throat> yeah. Well, <laughs> what, what, what kind of pop? Because, I mean, pop is very general. Do you consider the Beatles pop? Okay, then I like Beatles. You like the Beatles? Yes. Well, you know, some of their songs are on the verge, like between pop and rock and roll. Maybe we could do some kind of Beatles style rock and roll. Mm, still, I don't think that's a good idea. Still not? No, sorry. Well, okay, definitely think about it because you, you'll you have my email at the end of this presentation. If, 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 if you're into it, send me an email, okay? Antoine at rockandroll.english.com, something like that. Thank you. So you see, we have very short conversations. They're a lot of fun. And what is very, very valuable here for me as a teacher is that there is zero preparation possible from the students. Everything that I hear the students use here is something that they have turned into a skill. For production speaking activities, you know students, students are smart. When they're preparing for their production activity, they're thinking, oh, wait, Antoine recently taught us that. I think he'll be very happy if I use it. Oh, and, and Antoine taught us a, a, a list of vocabulary last week. If we use them, we'll probably get a great grade today. It's fine. I, I'm happy when they do that sometimes because it's good for them to recycle all that. 
but it doesn't give me a good indication of what is in their skills. In these spontaneous activities, I only see what my students master. That's why I call them, to me, they're the best tests of fluency. And convince is a great activity to test fluency with conditionals, with future, because convincing is often about that. <clears throat> I have tons and tons of more activities like that that I would love to show you, but let's face it, I've already taken five minutes more of the time I promised, and I'm ashamed. Right? Yeah, another example of present perfect. Exactly. <laughs> so I'll leave you with this framework. As I said, you, you don't need to take notes. I'm going to send uh, uh, the presentation, everything in PowerPoint format so that you can use it yourselves. But basically, since I've started preparing my lessons this way, I have to say on two fronts. First of all, I, I have, I've never taught English this effectively. My students develop reflexes, develop fluency way faster than before. And for me, I can prepare my lessons much more efficiently, honestly, because I always have this clear structure in my head, P1, P2, P3. P1 is just to check their knowledge. P2, transfer knowledge to skill. P3, test skill. And whenever my students are performing English in front of me, I listen and I identify what is still knowledge, but not yet skill. Okay, I need to bring them a P2 for that. And what is already a skill, but there might still be making a few mistakes. Oh, I need more P3s on that for next lesson. And my, my lesson preparation has never been this efficient, honestly. Super, super efficient which is very important for us teachers, because let's face it, we could die for our students. Always look for what is the most efficient for you as a teacher. Most effective for the students, most efficient for us teachers. So that's me. If you want more of these activities, you, you can easily follow me on my Instagram or contact or things like that. I regularly shoot videos with new activities that I design because Tom and I design new activities every week and we put on, them on our platform and I'll send you my presentation. Thank you very much, Antoine. My pleasure. I don't know if we still have time. I, I have a few minutes for any questions if anybody has them right now. Exactly what I wanted to say. No, we don't. No. I have no questions. Really mm -hmm. Just a million of thanks for making this an engaging presentation at the end of the day. Oh, you're welcome, Irina. This is our way of saying thank you. I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the, the opportunity of doing it in person in Moldova, too. Okay, wait. Well, well, everybody, if there are any questions, gather your thoughts. I'm just going to attach there we go okay my presentation is loading in the chat you can download it there there you go can you see it yes it's all all okay thank you perfect uh, okay so i hope also as you said that we will meet face to face very soon <laughs> hopefully very soon